Th there are a couple of words that people need to know to understand uh, all about you uh, and your films, and one of them is, uh, is a MacGuffin. Can you explain what a MacGuffin yes, is? Yes, a, a MacGuffin you see in most films about spies. It is a thing that the spies are after. In the days of Roger Kipling, it would be the plans of the fort on the Khyber Pass. Mm -hmm. It would be the plans of an airplane engine and the plans uh, of an atom bomb, anything you like. It's always called the thing that the characters on the screen worry about, but the audience don't care. Mm -hmm. And someone asks, what is a MacGuffin? And there's a, the, it's described in a scene in an English train going to Scotland, and one man says to the other opposite him, he said, what's that package above your head there? And the other man said, oh, that, that's a MacGuffin. He said, well, what is a MacGuffin? He said, well, it's an apparatus for trapping lions in the Scottish Highlands. The man said, but there are no lions in the Scottish Highlands. He said, then that's no MacGuffin. <laughs> uh, thank you for clearing that up for us. That's, oh, yes. Yeah. And you adopted that word as the thing, the letters, it's the plans. It's a thing that the... the spies are always yeah. after. Yeah. I think, uh, well, there's so much to talk to you about. Um, we, we will take a break right now to get some time. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Mr. Hitchcock, you've... What? May I say, I was very confused by that last commercial. Oh, what was it? I didn't well, even Well, it was notice. a commercial for a laxative. And yes. I wonder why all those people doing sports and all that sort of thing, well, they would need a laxative after such <laughs> vigorous movements all over the place. I, I can't imagine, but it does, does that give you an idea for another film? Uh, well, I don't know, but it's uh, <laughs> rather astonishing. The, um... <laughs> Well, let, let me ask you something that ties in a bit with that. Uh, you did a movie that would have seemed impossible because some of the actors had to be birds. Uh, in fact, a great deal of them. Um, I, I often wonder if you had to spread newspapers everywhere in the making of that film. <laughs> I mean, it seems like such an enormous uh, problem to take on, to do a film where it you was, needed birds. Well, yes, did, did, did you ever think you should turn back, that it was going to be too hard? No, 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 because I purposely... Uh, uh, didn't advise the technical department what would be necessary. Mm. Otherwise, they would have said impossible. But I think about 3,200 birds were trained, mm -hmm. and the ravens were the, were the cleverest. They're very smart birds. Very smart birds, yeah. indeed. What was the hardest thing to get the birds to do uh, in that film? Uh, I don't think anything was really very difficult. You know, they're... Uh, the seagulls were the most vicious. Were they? And, to yes. Work with? Yeah. The hardest thing was to try and persuade them not to be so vicious. What psychology do you use on a seagull? Bird seed. <laughs> okay. And, uh, there was one scene where the bird swooped down and uh, took a piece of a forehead out of uh, out of the girl, out of one of your actresses. Well, yes. uh, if I can give away a trade secret. Please do. That's what we call a double printing job. The girl was sat in a boat with a tube of compressed air run up her back into her hair, and at a crucial point, a jet of air was blown, which blew her hair up. Mm -hmm. Then on a separate film, we took a picture of a gull sweeping down, and then the two were put together and it oh. swooped down to that crucial yeah. point. It's fun to know how those things work. It's amazing. You, yes. You've accomplished that. I hope we can get talks about more of them during the evening. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have a clip from the birds. It might be well to roll that right now. Right. Perhaps some people haven't even uh, haven't had fun of seeing it.
gives me the will to see it again. Maybe when we come back, we could... Um, that thing gives me the creeps to see. When we come back, let's talk a little bit about uh, frightening things well, in movies. and have chicken for dinner tonight. <laughs> I love chicken. Or I did oh. until you said that. We, we have a message. We'll be right back. Stay with you. Mr. Hitchcock, let me ask you a bit about your thoughts on violence on the screen and all that. It's interesting because that uh, clip we showed from Psycho uh, was from a film that was edited quite a bit when it was shown on primetime television. Some of the scenes were considered too... Some moments of scenes were considered too awful to show. In how those you, days. How do you feel about that? Well, there's more permissiveness today, but don't forget that's ten years ago. Things were quite different then. You, you think if they showed Psycho now, they would, st they would be able to show every scene oh, that you I shot? Oh, I think so, without a question, sure. Really? I, I doubt that, because they were, they were rather worried that we were showing anything tonight from that. Well, there's a different approach for television than there is for movies. Oh, yes, I meant on television, that on television... Ah, uh, no, no. Television, the same conditions apply to Still, yeah. Yeah, I see. I didn't know uh, that. But I'm surprised, clear. really, that uh, in English television, when I was over there, they allow a certain amount of nudity on English television. Complete nudity on English television. Yes, yeah. considering the weather over there, I'm surprised. <laughs> They must hate the studio somewhere. I know what you mean about it. But Somebody it's asked true me the other day, how long did I think nudity would last on the screen? And I, if he wouldn't think me too vulgar in saying, I said that uh, all breasts sag eventually. <laughs> Next question. You have research to prove that? Uh, no, I'm afraid I don't. No. <laughs> uh, it, it, but in that scene from Psycho, you had a curious effect that it seemed that, uh, that uh, Balsam seemed to be almost floating backwards, which added to the, the horror of it a bit. It was like a dream. He seemed to be almost in slow motion a bit as he fell backwards. And I realized the second time I saw it that that was where part of the fright came from. Well, the, the point is that um, if a person falls, they are fighting the fall. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't just drop back. You know, if you're falling back, there's an effort to, to prevent it. I think you get that effect there. But didn't you do something special in the shooting of that? Or did you have him suspended? Oh, well, it was, a, it was a double printed thing. It was. He didn't fall down a single stair. He sat in a very comfortable chair and just lay there like that. Is that right? Yes, we made the background first to moving down. Well, I'd love to know how you did all, I've done all of those things. Well, a lot of the well, answers are in the That's how earn their money, you see. Yeah. <laughs> By not having to do the things they're supposed to do. You, you, uh, you called actors cattle once in your career and um, offended a few well, of them. Well, I think at the time, I think I said, well, I was accused of calling actors cattle, mm -hmm. and I said that um, I would never say such an unfeeling, rude thing about actors at all. Mm -hmm. What I probably said was that all actors should be treated like cattle. <laughs> <laughs> And, and you went on to do that. Uh, In a nice way, of course. Yes. <laughs> Fed them at the right hours and uh, brushed them occasionally. Well, uh, do you, uh, I, I know you, um, what one actress got you for that somehow, by she once uh, had some cattle brought onto a set or that something. That was a famous name. Carol Lombard. Carol Lombard, yes. Yeah. And she was a woman with a great sense of humor. Mm -hmm. And I arrived on the set the first day of shooting, and she'd had a corral built and in it were three live calves with the names of the actors on big discs round their necks. Yeah. 